Any musical work has its own personal history, whether inspired by time and place or shaped by the social dynamics between performer, recording personnel, and composer. Considering this, fellow pupil Anardi McAllister and I sat down with our former composition instructor, Paul Osterfield, to hear his thoughts on his most recent album of chamber works, Sound and Fury. Could you talk about the first stage of the collaboration process, say, talking to the musicians or getting ideas from them, getting to know them, and then writing the piece itself? Sure. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's different for every piece, depending, at least depending on the performers. There's some performers that want me to just write the piece and, and give it to them. There's some that want drafts along the way. There's some musicians that want to give input there and, and, and some sort of workshopping, which, 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 which I welcome. Um, and then there's some that just just want to wait for the finished product. So it depends. It depends on that. And it also it also depends on. I mean, if I'm writing a piece and write it write it really quickly, and finish it quickly, well, then there's not as much time um, to, to 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 send a lot of drafts. Well, the interesting thing that I, I just realized yesterday about this disc is their um, the Blake Mar Trio. I mean, they they, 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 they they I've never talked with them. Everybody else I, I, I are either are either current colleagues. Um, or former colleagues, um, and I just realized that of everyone who has talked with me, um, each of those performers, except for one, at some point has taught in the studio next to mine. <laughs> um, I, I, I just just realized that yesterday. Um, whether that's interesting or not, I don't know. But <laughs> but I realized it. Tell us about uh, writing the condensing images and uh, working with Michael Jorgensen. Whenever I write for a certain player, every player has a different style. Um, and so, I mean, I want to write for them. I want to write a piece that it's not that they're not the only person that can perform it, but, but any, I mean, but that, I mean, like, say, if I'm writing for violin, any violinist could, could perform it and sound fantastic with it. Um, but as far as like certain things, like, uh, I mean, I, I have like certain violinists' sounds in mind. Sure. So, I mean, I had, so that piece, I had Michael's sound in mind and I had Caleb's sound in mind. So, um, and, as, and particularly as far as, how they would interpret things. I pretty much knew how they were going to interpret it. I knew what t kind of tone color that they, that they, that they, that they, they would choose. Um, so that even though I wasn't hearing them playing it along, I mean, I, I, I knew, I, I, I pretty much knew what their interpretation would be. And I was right. Splendid. <laughs> and you have the Smoky Mountain Trio. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit closer to home for us. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, that was um, written for the Stones River Chamber Players, and that's a faculty ensemble. Um, so, and I've that's the fifth piece I think of, of, of mine that that, that, that ensemble's performed. So each time it has, has been a, been a different been, been a different configuration, mm -hmm. um, and so it's I mean writing for my colleagues and oh, for my friends too. Um, Your I, neighbor, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yes, and and actually. To, to, and 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 uh, and of that trio, um, two 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 of two of two of them have been been sure. in the office next to mine, um, as, as, as I mentioned before. It was Lynn Ricey who, who asked me for the piece, mm -hmm. um, and and whenever I've had pieces with Stones River chamber players, there have been other pianists who have played it, and so I said, well, I'd like. I said, well, I, I want to involve piano in the ensemble. I said, I don't want you to play it. So I I, I started with that, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, what do I want to do? Around that, and I thought, well, so I had have having Angela and, and, and Andrea. I mean, both my hallway and both, both people that I've gotten to know very well. Um, I thought that would be a really good combination. Mm -hmm. And and I believe by then both Angela and Andrea had had, had played piece of mine, my, at least at least one piece of mine by then. Sure. So I mean, they, they, they knew my music, and I thought these are people. That I, I mean, they're all dear friends. And they're people I love working with. <laughs> Fury, I was sequestered, basically. Um, I, I was in the McDowell Colony for, for, for a month, and I mean, the, 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 there were there were payphones there, which which, which I, I used from time to time to, to, to call whomever. Um, 
and there were a couple of public computers, so I could at least have some internet access. But the idea was being away from things. I made sure I had my all my bills paid in advance, so that I mean I didn't have to worry about sending anything out. I could just spend four weeks in the colony just composing. I mean, when I'm at home, there's there's so many distractions. Um, I didn't have to worry about feeding myself when I was getting hungry around lunchtime. Then that's, that's around the time that, that my lunchbox popped up. <laughs> um, and having a regular schedule and basically spending all morning composing, spending a little bit of a, a little bit of time composing after lunch. Then I'd take a break and I'd go, go back to the common house and I'd go back and compose for another two hours. After dinner, no more composing. But whatever I didn't finish, I can finish the next day. Let's talk about the etudes. Book one for book piano. One. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you, you mentioned book one and people ask, does that mean there's gonna be a book two? And the intention is for there to be a book two. Um, it's, I mean, I haven't started one yet but it's, it's something that, that, that I'm interested in, in, in doing. Um, yes, so Caleb and I were in joining studios, so we just started talking, and we, we started talking about a piece. And I said, well, what kind of piece do you want? So he thought a little bit, and he thought, I like a set of etudes. And so as far as etudes, there are there's a few ways you, 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 you can go. I mean, you can have each etude um, focus on a different technical aspect, or it could just be a series of hard pieces. And he said, I like a series of hard pieces. He probably regretted uh, saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you pick Kandinsky specifically to write music to? The whole idea as far as writing music based on, on visual art is something that's inspired me for a long time. Um, and I was afraid to do it at first. Because I was afraid of writing a piece that didn't really represent the intent of the painting, mm -hmm. and the question of whether I misrepresented the painting. Um, then then I, I talked to an artist and obviously shared, shared these fears, and she said, well, don't worry about that. Just, just, just write the piece as far as how you interpret it. And I thought, oh, it can be that simple. And then coming to the Kandinsky, the same thing, even though they're different artists and, 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 they're, um, and, and they're different styles, the same types of things attracted me to those and later Juan Moreau, the same types of things. Um, and it's not only things, a question of things that I like, but things that really jive with who I am as a composer. Um, so having this artwork that has vivid colors, that tends to su suggest a lot to me. Um, I've always been fasc fascinate, fascinated by, by geometry. And these are three um, pit painters who uh, do, do a lot with geometric shapes. So, and also I tend to be abstract as a composer. I mean, these are abstract arts. So, so it's something that, it, it, I feel that even though they're painters and I'm a composer, we're, we're speaking some more language. Hmm. I do want to add that, that, that Michael, when we were going through the process of, of, of solidifying dates and everything for, for the, um, the recording session, he, he mentioned that he had an opportunity to apply for a grant from his current institution, which, which is Lehigh University. Um, and so he might be able to help out as far as the production costs for the Kandinsky images. And so, so I, I'm very thankful to Lehigh Uni University for, for helping out. Well, as far as smoking about an autumn, I thought, well, I'm a Tennessee composer. Here, um, moved away before I turned one. Been back in Tennessee for quite some time. Um, so, I, so I was thinking, I wanted to have some piece based on Tennessee, something about Tennessee. Um, I was thinking as well, do I want to be as far as different parts of the state? Do I want to have like a Nashville type thing, a Knoxville type thing, and a, um, a Memphis type thing, or Chattanooga, or what? And the only thing that really seemed to resonate with me was, 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 was the Smoky Mountains. Being in the mountains and having everything so quiet, where you really don't see anybody else, just get in the car and within a few minutes, uh, you're in Gatlinburg, and there are, um, there are hanging shops everywhere, there's all sorts of just a lot of hustle and bustle. Um, and it's just so, sort of interesting that just so close to each other, you, 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 you just go from a lot of people and a lot of things happening to complete serenity. So it just seemed as though there's a lot just there that, that, that could influence a multi movement piece with a lot of contrast.
Anara and I are both students of yours. And yes. working with you while at school, we've gone through the composing process, writing for specific people, rehearsing, and then performances, premieres. Mm -hmm. uh, recording sessions, not as much. Not so much. What is it like, that experience, going from having these pieces being in live performances to going to recording sessions in the studio? Well, re recording sessions are, are very different than live performances um, in, in several aspects. Well, one is that if something doesn't go well, well you, you, you can retake. Mm -hmm. Such as this video. As, 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 as you out there in the audience <laughs> may not be aware, we've had a few retakes, <laughs> a few interesting ones. Um, it, 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 that, 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 that's, that's part of it, is, um, is, is that not everything always has to be perfect. If something's not perfect, then do it again, and, and, and the whole magic of the, of the recording studio and, and, and edit, editing. Um, but, but also, you don't have unlimited time, for one thing. Uh, you don't have unlimited time, and, and you don't want to take too much time anyway, because uh, 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 this question is as far as fatigue. Um, because you want to make sure you don't just start rehearsing in the studio. I mean, that, that's, that's a waste of time, it's a waste of money. So as far as being in the studio, it's you want to make sure you, that you have a great team. Um, I, I hired the same producer um, and the production company as far as my producer and recording engineer that I did, um, for, for, did, did for my previous disc. They're, 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 they're fantastic. I love working with them. Um, and having people whose ears are fantastic um, having a producer who I, I, I think knows the score better than I do, um, somebody I can, I can trust. So if I'm not sure if I, if I heard something right, then I mean, if I ask, ask him, I, 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 I if he said it's fine, then I know it's fine. Using Ocean Way Studios has been it's, it's also been fantastic. I mean, I booked booked them before for a previous disc, um, and it's it, it's a beautiful studio, just beautiful acoustics, and, and visually it's beautiful. A lot of classical music is repertoire. Composers have been dead for centuries even. So having the composer as an element of the recording session isn't always a given. They're always performers, recording engineers, not so much composer. So how do you figure in to talking with the performers and the recording engineers? For, the, for this recording, I was in the booth the whole time. Um, and for other recordings I, I, I've conducted. And whereas for, the, for this, everything's small enough that there's no conductor. So I was in the booth. Um, everything ran through Blanton, who was my producer. Um, so if, if I had anything to say, I just said it through him, or he'd push the button and I'd and I, and I, and I talk. Um, he, 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 was the, he was the quarterback, which is good, because I'm not sure if, if I'd really feel, feel comfortable being in that role. I mean, performers do their jobs great, production team do their jobs great, and then, and then, and then later we're, we're working with Parm Recordings as far as, as far as the production side, they, 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 did, they did their job great. It's, it's nice for somebody who, for me, can have a controlling personality to be comfortable letting go and knowing everyone's going to do their jobs and they're going to do great. Just to wrap up, I actually have a copy on hand. Mm -hmm. So Sound and Fury, Chamber Music, Paul Osterfield, coming out uh, November 11th. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you. Congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.